30 seconds. Welcome here to Jackson Hole Mountain Resort here in Wyoming's magical Teton Mountain Range. DC here joined alongside Jeff Moran here at the base of Ten Sleep Bowl in Corbett's Kular. The scene here for this amazing, iconic event, the Kings and Queens of Corbett's, and what an amazing year it was last year, Jeff. It was. We had some uh, pretty historical stuff go down at Kings and Queens here in this historic, amazing run. This is Corbett's Cool R, as you said, uh, regularly voted one of the gnarliest, steepest, most dangerous, most extreme runs in all of North America. That's right. And history, we've seen it go down here in years past. Wouldn't be surprised to see some history go down here today. But let's take a look at what went down last year. have it Veronica Paulson talking about highlights from last year the first woman to land a backflip in the courts and she went massive she went huge making history she'd been working on that backflip the first and second year of Kings and Queens and finally as everyone was saying third time's a charm and she put it down last year and the stoke factor was real with her she just was elated coming through the rest of the course didn't even bother with any of the features didn't need to she was the queen indeed after that and then Jake Hopfinger, the first gentleman to land a double into Corbett's with a double backflip, followed up by his buddy Parkin, who got the double and got the throne last year. Yeah, absolutely. Parkin walked away with the with the crown. And then we also had Mikey Marone on the snowboard side of things, putting down the first backflip for, on it for a snowboarder last year. Double backflip. That's correct. So there you have it. Some of the stuff that went down last year. Looking forward to seeing some history go down this year. But right now, we're going to send it to the top to the third member of our team, Tina Dixon, holding it down in the elements at the top of the Kular. Welcome everyone to the very top of Corbett's Kular. Absolutely one of the most spectacular places in all of Jackson Hole. Now, as we get ready for the event to start, the weather, well, you can see it. Snow is falling, there are clouds swirling, and there is some flat light conditions that the athletes will have to deal with. But the good news is you can see from top to bottom, you can see the landing. And as far as the wind goes, there is a slight breeze, so we'll have to keep our eyes on that. But the weather, three degrees, but the athletes have been keeping themselves very warm by packing in their run-ins, building their jumps, takeoffs, and everyone I have talked to is so excited to be part of this event and really hyped to get dropping in. Thank you so much, Tina. Much respect to you. Thanks for holding it down in the elements and getting the vibe and the pulse up at the top. We got to talk about our format this year, same as last year. All these athletes 
two runs. We've got 26 athletes, 10 men snowboarders, five women snowboarders. And then for the skier side of things, we've got nine men and two women. And pretty cool way that we determine the start order out here for Corpus. Yeah, it was really cool. So they had a rider gathering uh, a couple nights ago, and they have a full-on lottery machine, like one of those mesh cages that they spin the ping pong balls. So every rider came up and picked out their ball and had a number on it, and that was their drop order. Yeah, and it was great. I mean, the energy at that rider selection or the, the start selection party, the rider dinner was electric energy there. I loved it. And let's take a look at this start sheet. It was Aaron Blunk from Crested Butte, Colorado, his second time here at this event, who drew the first drop, followed by our 2020 king from last year, our reigning king, Parkin Costin, and then Jake Hopfinger getting the third drop. Hannah Beeman, her fourth year at this event. She's been so close to winning it, hasn't received that queen title yet. Would love to see that go down for her this year. Yeah, and then following Hannah, we've got Audrey Hebert, uh, and then Benji Farrow. It's his first year at Kings and Queens, followed by Ethan. Elias Elhart, who's been sticking around since he was just here at Natural Selection. Uh, and then Veronica Paulson, who is our reigning queen of Corbett's. Yeah, and as you see, looking down the start order, such an eclectic mix of athletes out here coming from all backgrounds. We've got some first timers and we've got some veterans. Regardless, they're all going to put on a show for us and super excited to see what goes down this year. And once again, it was Aaron Blunk who drew that first drop. And Aaron Blunk, you might recognize his name from the X Games from Half Pipe Competition. He's a member of the US Free Ski Pipe Team. But the kid, he's from Crested Butte, loves skiing any terrain you throw in front of him, and he'll guarantee he's going to slay it. Aaron Blunk dropping. Four, three. All right, here we go, kicking it off. Aaron Blunk going huge and unfortunately putting on display what a proper tomahawk is here in the Corbett's. But he's all right. He's all right. Tough cookie that Aaron Blunk is. Jeff, he has taken so many slams in his career and he just bounces back up. You know, it's crazy. Uh, like, right, we see him coming right off the nose there of Corbett's. And you really can't jump into Corbett's without going at least 30 or 40 feet. And I think he probably was closer to the 50 foot range. Aaron Blunk, not afraid to go big. Shout outs to Aaron Blunk, fresh off a bronze medal at X Games just a couple of weeks ago for half pipe skiing. Here he is coming into the bottom, just blasting a big straight air. And Aaron Blunk getting love from the crowd down here. And he's going to have a second run if he would like to take it to put it down. But uh, good to see the Crest Butte kid smiling. And again, he's he's just he's built like a brick house, Jeff. He, yeah, he can take slams like that, and he will be all right. That's a heavy slam to come back from in just a few months. It's good to see him here. Dropping next, our second athlete, our 2020 reigning king for Corbett's. We got Parkin Costin from Montana. It's his third time competing in this event. Won it last year. What's he got for us this year? Dropping into Corbett's is probably the most intimidating but rewarding part of the whole event. Last year coming into it, didn't have any goals besides just have a fun week with all the guys, go shred, go like send it, have really fun time. And when the event came to, like it went a lot better than I could have imagined. Everything kind of top to bottom, stuck it to my feet and then uh, felt confident enough where I was just like, I think that did pretty well. And, yeah, super, super hyped last year to have taken home the crown and back here to defend the title. We'll see what happens, but uh, looks like right conditions for it. So. Here we go, your defending champ, Parkin Costin. Oh, getting the double backflip again and stomping it. He's hyped, he's charging into these features. Nice left side 360, reaching down for that safety grab, coming into the final booter. And a massive flat three going well down that landing and showing you right there why he was crowned King of Corbett's last year. Parker Costin, you're an animal. I think he wants it. I think he wants the top of that podium again. And uh, he definitely showed us that with that last run. Oh my God, dude. Nice work. Yeah, Parkin. All right, your reigning king, defending champion from Corbett's last year, Parkin Costin, 
starting things off in style. How did that feel, my friend? Dude, up top, friggin' like came together. Super, super bad light this year. Everyone's sending it though. But conditions felt all time in there. It was super sick. So really excited to see what everyone else throws down. It was like, felt like you could send it as big as you want and be safe and have a good time. Just really hard to see the middle take off. So last minute, little three in there, but yeah, friggin' adrenaline right now. It looked like you had a, a slightly different angle on your line this year from last year, and it set you up really well for that. Was it intentional to be able to hit that first right side wedge? Definitely. Wasn't sure if I was going to be able to shut it down in time. Honestly, from the top, we couldn't even see those takeoffs. Okay. So it was like once you're in there, like, where am I going? And then we're able to kind of still make it happen, but really freaking flat light. So I'm super glad it came together. Well, you laced your first run. You're going to go back for run two? Definitely. Yeah, I need to clean it up. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome. Congrats. Thank you. thank you, dude. Best of luck, Parkin. There you have it. Your reigning king. First run down. Definitely going back for run two. I like that. Got to clean it up. All right. Getting ready to drop for his second time here in this event. Jake Hopfinger making history last year with the first individual to ever throw a double into Corbett's. It was Jake Hopfinger who set the tone last year and his buddy Parkin following it up, throwing his own double backflip. But Jake definitely has what it takes to get up on top. It's a pretty cool competition. Um, I love it. There's so much input for the athletes, um, all athlete judged. Uh, and it's just a blast to be up on the hill. Last year was a treat, to say the least. We had a great time. Um, we kind of went out a little differently. We built a little jump into it. Um, and it kind of allowed us to land a little closer in the good landing. Um, so I kind of liked that tactic, and I think we might stick with that one again this year. Well, dropping in next, we got Parkins' buddy, Jake Hopfinger, who is coming in right now, wanted to go double flat spin, and he does it, and he stomps it, going huge into a massive left three, loving the fresh snow out here in Corbett's after copious amounts of snow befalling here upon Jackson. Coming to the final booter, and just laying a big one out for the boys. Holy smokes, Jake Hopfinger, his first of two runs. My goodness, Moran. Wow. <laughs> and you know, getting the, getting congratulated by his good friend Parkin right as he comes through the arch. I mean, like we said, today was gonna be a historic day. We knew it was coming and we're already seeing, I mean, these aren't the most optimal conditions and you would never be able to tell judging from what we're seeing with the first few runs here. Well, Jake Hopfinger told me the other day he wanted to try double flat spin into it. And he did, and he went massive. And next to drop, she's competed in this event all four years that it's been held. Hannah Beeman, who has yet to take the throne, but definitely has what it takes to wear the crown. Let's hear more from the potential queen. I would say Corbett's is different from others just because of the terrain and also because we are going against the skiers. So it, it tends to push you in a different way and just seeing them out there riding Corbett's and doing the stuff they're doing is just pretty cool. It's different. We don't get to experience that too much. And I think just getting to ride Corbett's in the state that it is for the event, you know, like it's, it's still fluffy and powy. It's nice and soft and then having some cool features in there. It's just a really unique experience. Like you don't get to ride it like that at any other time. All right, well, here we go. Hannah dropping in. She was telling me that she wasn't going to air in and take the goat path, but hey, I guess when you're up there, adrenaline's pumping and you got to send it. Last year going for the huge method in there. Hannah with a nice back three. Yeah, there's a little, I was talking to Ranian Diarge, our uh, park crew, the head of the park crew, and he said there's about eight features in there, man-made features. Uh, they're all sort of just like fall line kickers. They don't have a lot of pop, so they feel really natural to come off of. And uh, Hana opening up a couple of the new features on the rider's left side. Uh, getting a nice well grab in there. Hana Beeman, her first of two runs. You know she wants that crown. Hannah Beeman, her first run, Aaron in, 
getting plenty of hang time up there. See if she will be taking her second of two runs. See if she can clean that up and really love to see her get crowned queen of Corbett Sun this year. Well, Mother Nature definitely coming in fierce down here. Let's see how it is up at the top with Tina Dixon. And guys, where I'm standing, it's about 15 to 20 degrees colder than it is at the bottom of the resort. We're also standing on the ridge, so we get a lot of wind and that adds to the cold. But the athletes, they're doing their part to keep warm. In fact, Audrey Hebert brought up a sleeping bag. In fact, she came up to me and said, hey, if you want to borrow my sleeping bag, you can use it. It's in my backpack. Just go grab it. And then Hannah Beeman said, I got an extra puffy coat if you want to use that. But there's no other event where I would be offered a sleeping bag or a coat than Corbett's Kular. And that just shows the camaraderie of this event, guys. All right, next to drop, our first rookie that we're going to see out here this morning. This is Audrey Hebert, residing up in Banff, the Alberta province of Canada, 32 years of age, her first Kings and Queens event. You were saying, Jeff, she's been here before, but Corbett's was close, so she didn't even get a chance to check it out on her first visit. Yeah, correct. She's one of the riders today that her first time in Corbett's will be when she jumps in for the contest today. And taking a nice tumble in there, letting us know that she is okay, getting some roars from the crowd. Once again, a rookie out here for the Kings and Queens of Corbett's. Audrey Hebert coming out of Banff. Originally the French Canadian hailing from the Quebec area. Audrey was saying how she, she really was excited for the, the format of this contest, about how um, just the, the way that the, the start positions were chosen, how it's all lottery, but really looking forward to the camaraderie and like riding with all these other athletes and meeting all these other athletes. Well, she definitely was going for it, as she should, right? First run, great snow. She's one of the, the first few riders to go, so we, we definitely see people with uh, high risk maneuvers coming into the Kular today. Uh, but yeah, I think that she's gonna probably want to take advantage of that second run. Okay, next up, another rookie out here for Kings and Queens, Benji Farrow, former member of the US Snowboard half pipe team, pipe jock, definitely spent a lot of time in those icy ditches and uh, man, kid rips, but he's transitioned into more of a free riding career and uh, loves chasing the powder. It's his first time out here competing in Corbett's and I'm really excited to see what Benji has to offer this very powerful rider he is. Yep. All right, Benji Farrow dropping five, four, three, two. All right, five. here we have it, Benji Farrow. Going for a double backflip it looked like there. His visibility is little challenging with the snow flying in the air, but Benji Farrow not afraid to send it, Jeff? Definitely not. I mean, that was that was insane. I mean, you know, as we've said, last year we saw the first double backflip flip from a snowboarder, and, and that was a, a result of how the energy built throughout the day with all of our, our athletes, and now we're seeing that kind of thing coming right out early on. And getting a nice straight air there at the end. And Benji shaking his head because he's like, man, I know I can stomp that. And again, I know he can too. We know he can. The kid is a powerhouse. I want to see him get back up there for his second run and put that down. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good that all the riders have two runs. And I really love that the format is they get to either take the second one or not. Um, and then if they do take both runs, they also get to choose which of those two runs ends up being the one that's judged, right? So there's a lot of freedom for the athletes in this competition uh, to really like make it their own experience. All right, next to drop, another rookie out here for Kings and Queens of Corvus. We've got Elias Elhart coming out of Germany, one of the best backcountry snowboarders from Europe. And it's time to check in for more on Elias' thoughts on being here and competing in Corvus. Well, my history with Corbett's is very short. The one time I've seen it was in a blizzard last week, so I didn't see all that much. 
Um, I have been here for the natural selection contest and I just heard the contest was on and it was like amazing conditions all throughout last week and so I thought might as well just stick around for it and give it a try. Elias Elhart, the dude films with Travis Rice. That's pretty much all you got to say, Jeff. Yeah, exactly, right? If Travis gives you the call and says, hey, come on up to Alaska. I want to film some lines with you. Like, you can't say no. Well, here he is dropping in for his first time here to Corpus in a beautiful method. Craig Kelly definitely going to be proud of that one looking down from above. Into the front side 360. Elias having a good time out here, Jeff. Yeah, it looks like that that uh, wedge right there in the middle kind of snuck up on him, but he's staying on his feet, and that was a beautiful method. And the backside 720 just uh, getting a little heel heavy and hung up there on the fresh snow in the landing, but crowd loves it. And how about that method in the Corbett's? Could that be one of the best methods we've ever seen thrown into this cool R? It was unreal. I felt like he was in that position forever. Like he just was hanging in the air. That shows how much hang time these athletes are getting every time they drop in. Oh, and no problem for us seeing that method as he just let that one hang out to dry. Well, European style, you know, you see a lot of riders grabbing in front of the bindings and uh, hey, if you got the proper tweak, I say it's whatever feels best to you. Yeah, I agree. That was very uh, reminiscent of the of Nico Mueller's method. Yeah. I, I love how that one trick is so iconic in snowboarding and every single person has their own take on it. All right, well, Elias there just throwing one of the most beautiful methods, if not the most beautiful method we've seen into this Coolar ever before. But next up, it's our 2020 queen of Corvettes, Veronica Paulson. And as we've said before, making history here last year, the first woman to ever do a backflip into Corbett's, and she did it proper too. I had been trying to land a backflip into Corbett's for three years. It took me a lot of practice, um, a lot of years of trying, and then last year finally put it down to my feet. I would just try to come into it with confidence, and after all the prep I had done, I was feeling really good. And, I actually didn't know I had it until a couple of turns after. I was still trying to hang on right when I landed, so um, just exploded with emotion. It was felt awesome and came home with the win. And here we have it, Veronica Paulson going for it again, laying that one out, and unfortunately, just looked like her tips just kind of catching the snow as she brought that backflip around, but wow. Well, Veronica Paulson, our reigning queen here for Corbett's, just going for it again, and I love seeing that. That backflip was massive, Jeff. It was huge, and you know what's interesting that we're seeing this year is a lot of the riders are coming off more of the rider or skier's left side of the nose, as opposed to last year, they were coming more straight into the gut of it. And that's a, that has a lot to do with just how the snow has stacked up this year. Um, you know, every year is a little bit different. And so when we were up there earlier, the riders were, were creating their individual takeoffs. And, and that just happens to be where they thought the best line would be this year. Veronica Paulson gathering herself and Hats off to Veronica going for it again this year. And just the confidence of that backflip she just went for there, Jeff. She was composed in the air, really stalled out that backflip. It was beautiful. Yeah, if, you, if you've ever seen any footage of her like preparing in the gate to drop for these events, like she does a ton of visualization. You can see her actually running through the motions, uh, like physically you know, preparing to do that backflip. And I think that comes from her years as a moguls competitor. Well, Veronica Paulson, the reigning queen, skiing into the finish area here. Big smile on her face. That's what we like to see. And hopefully she'll be heading back up for run number two. I want to see her put that down. Again, looking like she went bigger than last year. All right, next to drop, we got Grant Giller last year making his debut out here at Kings and Queens of Corbett's, coming out of Colorado. 
very talented snowboarder. Last year he came straight from a rail event to compete in this event. Just kind of giving you a little indication of how well-rounded he is. Yeah, Grant uh, is just such a nice guy, and here he comes. Uh, Grant Geller spinning big here into this couloir, and fortunately not getting the clean landing, but quick to get himself back to his feet. Oh, look at the snow up there. Yeah, I think it looked like he might have come in switch backside five, if I had to guess. It's a little tough to see from down here, but... Um, Going for the back flip there. Unfortunately, getting a little hung up. Grant Giller, for those that don't follow him on social media, and if you can take some gruesome photos as we look at this big, beautiful back three, take a look at his handle. Just a couple weeks ago, as he was filming down in Telluride, Colorado, he almost bit his tongue in half, it looked like. it's Again, not for the faint of heart if you're going to be looking at it, but uh, pretty impressive to see him out here riding after that accident. Yeah, he said they needed to reattach part of it, and he actually was considering maybe not coming. He didn't know if it was the right thing to do, and uh, he talked to the guys here at JHMR, and they are like, we'd love to have you, and so he decided, all right, he got a mouth guard, and he decided to come and do it. I know it's on his mind, though. He's being careful, but he decided he couldn't pass up this opportunity, and that makes sense. We are getting ready to see Hans Minnick drop in for his first of two attempts. Very stylish approach he took last year, buttering into the couloir. Yeah, Hans definitely has a pretty creative approach to snowboarding. Like everything he does, he puts his own little personal stamp on it, and that butter last year was a perfect example. Excited to see what he's got for us this year. Dropping in five. Here he is, Han Mindnick, dropping in for his first run. Oh, nice face shot after that 360 there. So it was at least a seven, maybe even That's a nine seven. off the top. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, nice recovery. That might have been intentional. That was a pretty sweet butter. And just a nice, beautiful Euro-style method to wrap up his run. Hans Mendick with his first of two runs. You can see him shaking his head over there. I think he's probably not as pumped with that run as, as he wanted to be. But uh, again, all the riders have the opportunity to take two runs. So I think we'll probably see him back up there again for a second one. All right, dropping in next. Uh, Newcomer out here to this contest, but no stranger to Jackson. It's a local boy, native out here for Jackson Hole. Sam Schwartz, 25 years of age. Really fired up to see Sam drop in here to Corbett's. Oh! Sam going for the double backflip, and he stops it. Local boy showing you how it's done. Sam was 10 years old when he first dropped into Corbett's, and it shows he's definitely got some experience riding it. Nice left three up there in his run, coming into the final booter. Those pow turns are going to play into his score. And a big old backflip at the bottom. Sam Schwartz, the local ripper, putting it down. If you're ever cruising around downtown Jackson Hole and want to get a drink from Sam, swim, swing on into local where he tends bar. Sam was saying that uh, one of his goals was to give Parkin a run for his money this year, and I'd have to say after seeing that run, he's living up to that statement. And judging by his trajectory here in the Corbett's, it looked like he definitely hit one of the man-made kickers they've got up there at the top as he just blasted off with that double backflip. Next to drop here, your 2018 King of Corvettes. This is Crazy Carl. Carl Fosvet got second place in 2019. Last year, 10th in a 1080. Getting word that he's gonna go for a switch night here on this first hit. But Crazy Carl, always excited to see what this Sun Valley, Idaho native has for us. And going for a big 720, it looked like here, is uh, lost a little bit of that in the snow. 
but Crazy Carl, always gonna see an exciting performance out of him. Last year we saw him go for a 1080 on a little more of the flat access rotation here into the Kular. Carl brings some really awesome energy to this event. Like, just being in the room with him, he, he, it's infectious. Like, he's so pumped on being here for Kings and Queens. It's, it's really great to have him back. All right, so Carl cleaning himself up. Nice switch left 540 there. Oh, nice pal turn. Crazy Carl coming into the final booter. And there's a huge left 10 cap in that tail. Left 10 blunt from Crazy Carl. And the crowd loves it out here. Crazy Carl, it's so nice having you back here at Kings and Queens of Corbett's. All right, dropping next, Marissa Krawczak. She's competed here in Kings and Queens of Corbett's before. Originally out of Northern Michigan, now calling Oregon home, doing it for Jones Snowboards in Oregon. Loves spending time on her split board and out snowmobiling as well. Marissa dropping in five, four, three. And here she is. One. Coming in for her first of two attempts. Sending it off the top and yeah, keeping her flow here into the couloir. Mute grab off that kicker in the middle. Might actually be indicator rock right there. Ski Patrol keeps an eye on that rock throughout the season and uh, once it gets about 70 inches of snow in there, that's how they know they, it's time to open it up. Here comes Marissa into the final crowd pleaser booter. And going for the nice method there, Marissa. Spent eight years as a wildland firefighter in the summers. Studying aviation as a fixed wing pilot as well. So well-rounded, creative young woman here. Dropping next, local boy, Blaine Gallivan. Hype to see this guy drop in, Jeff. He's a buddy of yours. Yeah, absolutely. Blaine is one of the most stylish skiers in all of Jackson Hole. Watching him and the way that he uses the mountain is incredible. And uh, we haven't seen him here since 2019. He was in Kings and Queens. And so I'm excited to see how he handles it today. And he was telling me the other day about his pizza business that he's got going with his girlfriend, Franny, in a converted horse trailer. Oh, would I love to be standing in front of that pizza oven right now. Well, here he is. Blaine dropping in. Looking like going for a seven there on his way in. Again, a little tricky for us to see from here, but huge three there. Coming in hot. Rock in the middle, kind of snuck up on him, and here he is in the crowd pleaser. And the rodeo five just coming up a tad bit short over that knuckle. But you hear it from the crowd out here, getting behind their local boy, Blaine Gallivan. And man, he's hyped. We're hyped to have him back. Third place in 2019. He's got another run coming his way as well. Next to drop, local boy, but his first time competing in this event, this is Max Martin, born right here in the heart of the Tetons. Yep, absolutely. Max and his brother Weez are, are both just ripping skiers, grew up here. Uh, he's an alumni of the Jackson Hole Ski and Snowboard Club. He's a personal trainer. He's like top of the top of the fitness charts right now. So uh, I know he's been in Corbett's a ton in his life, but I don't think he's ever sent it the way he is going to today. So I'm excited to see what he's got for us. Here we go, Max Bart dropping in. Looks like Max had a huge left side seven there, staying on his feet until the second hit. And Ski getting away from him, ghost riding down here into 10 Sleep Bowl. 
But you see the pole spin from Max Martin and the crowd out here in Jackson hanging out in a nice responsible manner and sending their love out to him. Yeah, that's got to be tough. I mean, you know, a lot of this, the competitors and the athletes are, might have trouble on the first big hit, uh, but when you stomp the first big hit off the nose, you, you know, you kind of feel like the hard part might be behind you. And so for him to have gone down on one of the smaller hits, it's got to be tough uh, to be processing, but I'm sure he's stoked that he's got another run coming up. And Max Martin coming into the bottom, here in the cowbell out here for the local ripper. Max, one of the Steo athletes here with his teammate Sam Schwartz, a local, well, local, locally based outerwear company, but uh, they're pretty big these days. Dropping next, we got another rookie. Never even has been to Jackson. This is Sophia Ruches doing it for Faction Skis, coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Likes to spend a lot of time chasing storms in her 1990 camper van. Yeah, she's uh, got a piece of my heart right there. I'm, I'm a camper van kind of guy, so I'm sure she's going to do just fine if she's cruising around in a camper van. Well, first time in Jackson. What better way to introduce yourself this, to this little slice of heaven by just entering one of the craziest contests that there is out there and just sending it into Corbett's. Sophia coming off the top of the, the west wall there. New line, we haven't seen that one yet, I don't believe. Like, definitely coming out over the rocks and not just off of the cornice. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the angles from all our cameras up there. Big shout out to all our production crew out here hanging out in these elements and getting all these beautiful shots for us and affording us all these angles. Yeah, what people probably don't realize is there are cameramen and women tucked into all of those nooks and crannies up there in the rocks on, on either side of Corbett's Coular. So that's how we're able to get all of these amazing shots. And Sophia Roosh is regaining herself now, just enjoying the beautiful pal. Getting a little bit of air there, but Jeff, she sent it off that west wall entering into the Coular. She did. That was... Uh, First time we saw someone take that line, she went really hard skiers left for her line in, and here she comes into the crowd pleaser booter at the bottom. Well, not a bad way to drop into Corbett's for your first time ever. Coming in, she had a, a huge smile on her face coming through the Red Bull arc over there, so. At least she had a good time getting down here. Uh, again, you know, as with many of the riders, this is a super tough event to, to do well in, and I'm sure she's happy she's going to get another run. But uh, it was good to see her coming through with that smile, right? Like some people are coming through, shaking their heads, and I think she's just pumped that she's here to be a part of it. Well, before we get to our next athlete, let's go ahead and send it back to the top to Tina Dixon. We're so used to seeing Yuki Kadono in big air and slope style contests. In fact, he was the first snowboarder to do back to back 1620s in a competition, but we never see him in big mountain events like this. This is new and he admitted to me earlier that he was nervous, but you know, Yuki's got such great board handling skills and overall everyone's really excited to see him out here. Well, Yuki Kodono has never been to Jackson Hole before, his first time here, and he is absolutely loving it. But enough for me. Let's hear what Yuki's got to say about being out here at this event. I just got invited like three days ago. Then looks so fun. I, I'm never doing like freestyle contest free ride contest. Yeah, it looks, looks scary. Like, big drop, like, whoo. But, yeah. It's gonna be fun week. Yuki Kadono, coming out of Japan, residing now here in the States, living at Big Bear out in California. 
2015 and 2020 Burton US Open champion, six time X Games medalist. He was an Olympian from 2014. And here is Yuki dropping in for his first time. Oh. All right, I think Yuki went switch back one. And technically, he stomped that. He got a little eaten up in the pow once he got down, but the landing was clean. I heard a rumor that he was going to try that, and it proved to be true. Oh, oh. 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 Yuki blasted the back seven. Oh, he's so pumped. He's so pumped coming in. All the other athletes are congratulating him. Like, he's so hyped. That is, his energy is infectious. Everybody is going nuts for him right now. Well, Yuki Kadono, congratulations. Omerito Gozaimas for your first time dropping into Corbett's. How was that for you? That felt so good. Amazing, the best, best snowboarding ever. So good. Yuki, have you ever hit cliffs this big or done tricks like that off anything? No. That was my first time <laughs> hit a cliff. Yeah, amazing. Dude. You got another run coming your way. You going to take run number two, Yuki? Yep, for sure. All right, well, run number one, Ichiban in the books. Yuki Kodono, thank you so much. Thank Domo you. arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. And our next athlete to drop in, coming out of Park City, now calling Salt Lake City your home, this is Madison Blackley. Fourth place finish last year here at Kings and Queens of Corbett's said that was the highlight of her snowboarding career. But before she drops in, let's hear some words. Well, one of the unique things about this competition is there's really no practice. Um, you just have to kind of hope that the, the conditions are what you expect of them. Um, which can be super variable. It's really cool that it's skiers and snowboarders. I really like that we go together because it's kind of the novelty about like which snowboarder is going to beat the skiers in a skier competition. And I think that's just a really fun thing about this. Well, let's see if she can get a new highlight and stomp an epic run out for us out here today in the Corpets. And here we have Madison Blackley dropping in. Looks like most of our, our athletes today are taking that kind of rider skiers left line closer to the west wall, a little bit different than what they were doing last year. Madison able to make her way over and get the first kicker on uh, riders right. Nice and clean here for Madison. We're getting towards that uh, that time of the day where there's quite a few tracks in Corbett's now, so riders are going to have to take that into consideration as to what line they choose on the way down. Madison going for the nice big front three at the end. Used to compete on the slope style circuit for events such as Dutour and Grand Prix, and well, stepping away from those types of competitions and good to see her out here at Corbett's once again, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. And Madison was saying that she was really mentally prepared for this year. I think a lot of that has to do with having already been here once and had a year under her belt and knowing what to expect. But uh, she seemed really focused coming into the event. Some of the athletes said they didn't really know what their plan was and she seemed like she had it all together. And our next athlete getting ready to drop in is going to be Salt Lake City's Thane Rich calling Alton Snowbird his home mountains out here doing it for forefront skis and fly low. Also a pro rally car racer. Thane's got a pretty interesting background. It says he uh, he once conducted the Utah Symphony in fifth grade. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, unfortunately, Thane not stomping his first landing here in Corbett's, but cleaning it up on his way through and a nice left seven to round out his run. 
So Thane Rich, see if he can clean up his entrance into Corbett's on his second run here at the Kings and Queens of Corbett's 2021 edition. All right, dropping next, we've got Mount Baker, Washington local, Zoe Vernon, Bank Slalom racer as well, racing in such events as the legendary Bank Slalom and Dirksen's Derby. Yep, yep, and uh, coming back out here this year for Kings and Queens of Corbett's with her, with her boyfriend, Hans Minnick. And here's Zoe dropping in for her first of two runs. Looks like Zoe having a little trouble up top. We're getting later in the drop order now, and so it's definitely going to be tougher for these athletes to stomp their landings off the nose. You know, like I said earlier, that's a 30 to 50 foot drop just to air in. And with as many tracks as we have now, uh, it's going to make it a lot more, a lot more difficult. And Zoe back up on her feet, getting some nice pal turns in. Still plenty of fresh snow up there. Once, once you get down a little bit into the middle section of the couloir and it opens up a bit, quite a bit of fresh snow still for, for our competitors. The crowd is hyped on Zoe as she comes in to this final hit, the crowd pleaser. Zoe Vernon with a tail grab off that final hit coming through the Red Bull arc. Being welcomed down by all the competitors. A lot of the competitors were talking about how one of their favorite components of being at this event is literally getting to the bottom and reuniting with all of the other, other uh, friends and competitors and being able to watch the event from the bottom. It's Garrett Warnick getting ready to drop in for his first of two runs. His first time competing in this event. Coming out of Bend, Oregon, home mountain of Mount Bachelor. That dormant volcano, honing the skills of many athletes. It's like Garrett was going, I think that was a backside five. It could have been a switchback five, but uh, Getting right back up on his feet and back into the <laughs> the man-made features here in the lower part of the course. Bobbing here into the final hit. There we go. I love that he put all that extra flair all the way through the landing and the the Red Bull arc into the finish zone. That's gonna that's gonna work well for him. And you know, a reminder to everyone watching: this is athlete judge, peer judge. We don't have a panel of judges anywhere checking this out, giving scores. Uh, once we collect all this footage and, and edit all their runs together, the athletes are gonna get together and have viewing uh, a viewing session, and they're the ones who judge each other and decide who are gonna be the ones standing on top of the podium. Dropping next, we've got 23-year-old Cooper Branham. Coming out of Gig Harbor, Washington, Crystal Mountain, his stomping grounds. He had moved to Colorado and was basing himself out of there. Last year, Cooper competed in this event for the first time. Loves it up here. Fell in love even more so with Jackson that he ended up moving here, basing himself out of here now. Yep. Cooper has been spending a lot of time with his buddy Cam Fitzpatrick, who's also in the contest today. Uh, they've been filming together. They're backcountry buddies. So uh, Cooper's definitely becoming a, a, a solid fixture in the Jackson Hole shred scene. Riding for Burton Snowboards, getting ready to drop in for his first of two runs. The very colorful kit he's rocking out here today, Jeff. I like his kit. He's got the, the full muted pink kit head to toe. And here's Cooper dropping in for his first of two goes. Looks like Cooper was, I think that was switch back five, kind of misty flip. He definitely butt checked, but got right back up. Yeah, bounced right back up. Yep, sending the wildcat. A little mini cliff drop off that rock in the in the middle of the the Kular where it starts to fan out, and here's Cooper off of the.
Uh, good to see Cooper get up from a tough slam. He fell from really high up there. But up and smiling, and that's what we like to see. Cooper just moving out here this past year to elevate his career, and it's definitely showing in his riding. Let's see if he'll get back up there for run number two. Next to drop, we have got another first timer here for Kings and Queens of Corbett's, Jason Robinson. I was so excited when I saw his name on the start sheet. I've been enjoying his video parts as he's been filming with Absinthe Films for years now. But Jason Robinson dropping in for his first time here into Corbett's. Let's see what he's got for us. So when I was up there earlier with all the athletes and they were kind of scoping out where they were, were planning to take off, I heard rumors of J-Rob wanting to take off from this, this zone, the far rider's right of the couloir. And I'll be honest, I was looking at it and I just don't know where the line is. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to see what he's gonna what he's gonna come up with. This is definitely gonna be one of the higher risk, higher reward lines, and uh, definitely one of the most unique lines that we'll see not only this year but of all of Corp uh, all of our kings and queens events. I would like to send a shout out to his mom, Pam, if she's watching from home, and here he is. Oh, J-Rob coming in hot from around those upper rocks. Looks like he misjudged the trajectory on that first rider's left hit, but came oh. right back with a nice smooth backside three. And the beauty of those turns right now. Here he comes into the crowd pleaser. A little in the back seat, but getting that nice stylish frontside 180 around. You know, J-Rob has been described by Voli Nyvelt as uh, one of the more unique and creative riders out there. And uh, I think we just saw that go down. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding, taking an unconventional approach. And I like it, Jeff. He somehow figured that out. I, I'm gonna have to go back. I, we're gonna have to need. We're gonna need to check the tape because that is gonna be one of the most impressive things to have to be able to get through that line on his feet and make the rest of the run come together uh, is a, is a huge accomplishment. And I, I would likely say that his peers are probably gonna look at that pretty uh, with, with pretty high scores. Next up, another rookie out here for this event. This is Alex Hall, a member of the U.S. Free Ski Slope Style team. What an accomplished individual he is. He's just 22 years of age. He's already got three X Games medals under his belt. He's an Olympian. His first time here, his first day skiing here in Jackson, he was taken out to the Alta Cliffs and just sent the goalpost cliff, which you can speak about, on his first run. That is heavy. I mean, the goalpost cliff is like one of the gnarliest shots all around Jackson Hole. It's in bounds, and there's not a lot of room for error. So that's pretty amazing that he would go straight there on his first day in Jackson. Alex Hall dropping in five, four, three. Well, here he is two, dropping in one. for his first time into Corbett's. And just barely missing the wall there. Yeah, he put, he put it down. He was on his feet. But again, it looked like he got caught up in some of the, the chunder up there in the upper part of the coulee and uh, pulled over towards the west wall. But luckily, not going into it and managed to recover and still putting a run together here at the base. And this is where he'll definitely shine. On the bottom booter, the accomplished slope style athlete, Alex Hall, A. Hall, six foot four, tall in stature and just oozes style. And I cannot wait to see the replay and dissect what Alex Hall threw down here on his first of two attempts to be crowned the King of Corbett's. All right, ready to drop next. This is his fourth time competing in this event, Mikey Marone. He's a Wyoming native, 
born and raised in Casper, now calling Jackson home. Yeah, Mikey Marone, uh, a hardworking professional snowboarder. He kind of flies a little bit under the radar, but he's one of those dudes that when you see him ride in person, he blows your mind. Well, let's see what he's got for us as he's got his first run ready to drop in. Now with the nature of this event and how they determine the start order, Mikey drawing the 26th drop in for this. So there are a lot of tracks in there. You think he's gonna be phased by that? Well, last year, he had the last drop position as well. So although he didn't want it again, he's comfortable with it. He knows what it's like, he knows what to expect, and you know he knows he's not getting a fresh Corbett's, but that's okay, it didn't stop him from throwing down last year. Nope, luck of the draw didn't go his way, but Dropping still beast five, mode is what we're gonna four, see. Three. And here he is, Mikey Marone. Oh. Mikey going with that huge laid out double backflip. Uh, similar trick, but different style from what he did last year. And you know, he, he pretty much landed it and rode away, but unfortunately got it caught up in all the tracks. Like as we were saying, the, uh, the couloir is pretty beat up right now from having, I think it's 24, 25 people having gone before him. So he was working really hard to, to stay on his feet. He's actually riding his tail out quite a bit. Uh, but it did get him, and he, he got a little bit of a tumble. Good news is he's got most of the course left to, to see what he can do. Ooh, beautiful pal turn. Going hard, riders left. We've only seen a few people take that route, riding right along the ribbon of the rocks and coming into the crowd pleaser. Giant method there at the finish. Taking a little tumble, but right back to his feet and Mikey Barone will have the advantage of dropping pretty quickly now on the run two if he chooses to take that run our final athlete in this start order to drop in for his first of two runs here into Corbett's and his spot at the throne. This is local boy Cam Fitzpatrick, the son of a patroller here at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort, and what a great individual he is. Yes, absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Cam is like all time one of the greatest dudes I've ever met. It's been a fun progression to watch over the years and I couldn't be more stoked for Cam. Well, for more on the local boy, let's hear from Cam Fitzpatrick in his own words. Me and Corbett's, I feel like it's been a long-term relationship. My dad, pushed me into it when I was like eight, I think, on skis. And uh, I actually had repelled into it first when I was a younger kid. And, um, you know, it's just kind of been this iconic run, obviously, throughout my whole life, you know, growing up here in Jackson Hole Mountain Resort and having the background of the ski patrol family. Like my dad's been a ski patrol here for over 30 years. And uh, now that we have a contest into it, it's been insane. I mean, this is the fourth year and it's really an honor to be back here four years in a row and to be a part of this big event has been kind of a, a dream come true. Well here we go, Cam Fitzpatrick. Cam going half cab and riding away relatively clean all things considered. Trying to get a butter spin off of that first rider's right wedge but getting a little eaten up. Again we have more man-made features in the oh. Kular. More man-made features in the Kular this year than any time before. Cam going with a butter Missy flip it looked like. Yeah. Nice big slow 360. It looks like the riders are having a bit of a tough time judging the speed off of the crowd pleaser. Uh, we're seeing people go pretty deep on it. But uh, luckily, riding away pretty safe and smooth. That concludes our first of two runs for athletes here at the 2021 edition of the King and Queens of Corbett's here at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. Well, joining us now here in our open air booth, we've got Red Bull athlete and professional skier Johnny Collinson up in the mix. And Johnny, pleasure having you out here. Glad to see you've been out enjoying the snow here at the Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. Thoughts on uh, what we've seen here from those first runs? Yeah, I mean, it's been a pretty insane show so far. Start off with a bang, Aaron Blunk with a big zero spin off the top. 
right into parking. It's big dub back. And Jake with the big dub flat. Yeah, it's quite a show so far. All right, so if you were up there, just theoretically, what do you think your run would look like? Ooh, tough question. Ooh, yeah, the big like dog. It. Put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's hard saying. If we're playing fantasy league, right? Fantasy league. Yeah, like if you had the like to put together your fantasy run and yeah. you've seen what how awesome the course looks like today. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I would probably do something similar to Parkins run. Okay. Like a double off the top, a three somewhere in the middle, and then maybe like a seven or a backflip off the bottom jump. Mm-hmm. I like it. Strategic with the video game controller, not just mashing all the buttons. So <laughs> yeah. run number two coming up here. Some of your favorite picks and maybe some foreshadowing or some predictions of what you think you're going to see or what we're yeah. all going to see up here. Yeah, I'd really love to see Crazy Carl land that switch nine. He's been going for it, and it'd be sick to see him put it to his feet. And uh, also Thane Rich, he wants to land switch pretty bad, so that would be pretty awesome as well. Right on. Well, Johnny, thanks for joining us out here. Appreciate yeah. it. And, uh, hey, you going to spend a few more times out here in Jackson Hole? Yeah, enjoying the snow. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time to catch up with us. Johnny Collinson, yeah. make sure you check out his edits as well. <laughs> My man kills it. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thank you. Run two coming your way. We'll see what these athletes have for us as we look to crown a new king and queens, potentially, here of Corbin's Cool Art. Here we go, heading into the second runs. And it's going to be actually Crazy Carl dropping in first. So switching things up a little bit from the reverse start order, Jeff. Yeah, it sounds like a last minute decision. Uh, the reverse start order would have been a best case scenario, but with things going on, things change. And so now it's uh, rapid fire. Whatever athletes get back up to the top, they'll be able to drop when they're ready. Well, Crazy Carl coming in for his second of two runs. He's gonna be kicking off this second run order. Coming in, switch with the big switch nine. That was crazy and he held it together. All right, he definitely wants it. Here he comes into the rest of his run. Oh, he is attacking the cool R right now. Crazy Carl coming up, setting up his speed for the bottom booter. What's he got for us? Massive left side, 1080, locking in the tail grab, stomping that one, going to the bottom of the landing. And Crazy Carl puts down an epic top to bottom run. There you have it, your 2018 King of Corbett's, showing you why he has been on that crown before. Yeah, and then getting a second place in 2019, right behind Travis Bryce, and putting a big stamp on the event last year with that 1080 off the nose. Carl leaving an indelible mark here on Corbett's Coulard. Before our next athlete drops, let's go ahead and send it up to Tina, who's up at the top of Corbett's. The strategy for the second runs, most athletes want to improve on what they did the first time around, but you do have guys like Sam Schwartz who said, I did everything I wanted to, but hey, it's Corbett's, why not? And then Thane Rich said he went way too fast, so needs to slow things down. The good news is with the second runs, the athletes know what they're going up against. They know what it feels like. The bad news, the snow on the landings is not gonna be as good. All right, well, our next athlete getting ready to drop in for his second of two runs. It's gonna be Grant Giller. Grant made his debut out here for Corbett's last year. Really hyped to have him back. Really an ATV when it comes to snowboarding. He'll attack any terrain you throw out in front of him. Last year, we were really excited to hear that he had been at a rail jam right before coming here and competing in this big mountain freestyle event. So Grant Giller, you never know what he's gonna throw. He's got a very deep bag of tricks. But here he is, dropping in. Grant going with that switch back five again, but having trouble on the landing. A lot rides on that first hit, as you can imagine. I mean, this is the king and queen of Corbett's. Uh, 
So whatever goes down off the nose or off that first hit is, is going to be weighed pretty heavily. But as it is rider and, or peer judged, uh, we, the, the athletes know that landing that first hit is really, really tough. So they're going to take into consideration what kind of tricks are, are being thrown. And here comes Grant into the final hit here, the crowd pleaser. And Grant Giller having a little tumble right before the final hit, so not going to be sending off of that. But big shout out to Grant Giller being out here competing with us today, riding with the mouth guard. Grant has spent a ton of time riding over in Europe and making a name for himself over there. It's good to have him back stateside here for Kings and Queens again. Next to drop, we have got local boy. Sam Schwartz, Jackson native, getting ready to drop in his second of two goes here. Yes, yeah, Sam is, he's got like such high energy. Uh, I know he's been putting a lot of that energy into starting his own business here. Uh, Avant Delivery, I believe it's called. Um, so here he comes. Sam Schwartz dropping. Going for the double backflip. Going absolutely ginormous. Not putting down the clean landing gear, but composing himself to get the 360 there in the middle. And putting back-to-back -back tricks. Looks like, whoa, trying to go backflip and bring it around and land Yeah, switch. almost like Rodeo 5 style. And you can hear it out there. Our fans, our crowd, they're nice and responsibly distanced, but they're still able to put a lot of audible noise out there and show their love for these athletes. And the local ripper, Sam Schwartz, definitely getting the love out here. Now it's time for our next rider, Madison Blackley, 31 years of age, Originally from Park City, just moved about 30 minutes down the road to Salt Lake City, calling home now. Got a fourth place finish last year here in this event. It says that was the highlight of her snowboarding career so far. Had a great first run, and let's see what she's got for us here on run number two. Madison Blackley dropping in for her second run, taking the goat path entrance. Madison working her way over to that first wedge on the rider's right, looker's left. Front side air and staying on her feet. There's still lots of snow to be had up there in the couloir. There we go, backside three. I didn't even see that thing. I forgot it was up there. It's kind of hidden in the, in the flat light. So again, shout out to Madison for, for being able to pull that around and stay on her feet. It is a bit tough visibility for all of our riders today. You gotta keep that in mind. They're putting themselves on the line. And Madison finishing off super strong with a front side three off the crowd pleaser coming in through the Red Bull arc. And uh, everybody's, everybody seems to be feeling it. I'll tell you what I'm feeling is her kit. He's talking about the visibility out there. No problem seeing her out there. Steezy, steezy kit out there. Thank you, Madison. Looking good while looking good on her snowboard. I agree. Fashion counts. <laughs> Next athlete to drop in here for his second of two runs, Aaron Blunk. As I've been saying before, two-time X Games medalist, two-time world champ, two-time Olympian. He was the first one to drop the giant zero spin. What's he got for us this time? Aaron Blunk dropping in. Dropping five, four. Getting word that he is dropping and switch again. And going for the zero spin again. And Blanc, you gotta applaud the effort as the helmet and skis go flying off. And Aaron Blanc, such a boss, going for it. He's pumped, I mean, the landing was everything you didn't want to have happen. He lost everything that was with him. His, his 
gear is still coming down the mountain, but he's so pumped. He again went for that zero spin, which has never been done in that I know of. I've never heard of someone attempting that. When we talked to him earlier, he said, well, I'm going first. I might as well put it all on the line. I'm going to have the best snow of the day. I honestly did not think we were going to see him come back after 27 some odd riders have gone through and attempt a zero spin again. Who zero spins in the Corbett's once it's been tracked? Not only when it's fresh, but once it's been tracked out. The answer, Aaron Blunk, Crest Butte, Colorado, represent. And before our next athlete drops in, let's go ahead and send it up to the third member of our team with Tina Dixon, finger on the pulse from the top of the couloir. I wanted to show you guys what the jumps and takeoffs look like here at the top of Corbett's. Uh, you can see different sizes, different levels, and the athletes really took their time to make sure everything was dialed in. Another point, they're set back about five to 10 feet from the edge. That's done on purpose to help meet the transition better on the landing, especially on those bigger tricks like the double backflips, guys. Dropping in next, Benji Farrow coming out of Summit County, Colorado, former pike jock, now pursuing the passion of filming out in the backcountry. Here he is dropping in for a second run. Benji going with that double backflip again, and you can kind of see like the takeoff was set back from the lip. So he was in the air before he even came over the edge of the cornice, getting eaten up again on his way down. There's plenty of run left to have fun with. Oh, and Benji likes having fun. He's gonna enjoy some of this pal and coming into the final jump, you know he's gonna put a show on for the people here. Benji going huge, oh. yes, sir. going way deep. That, that one's hard to read, it looks like today. But uh, we're calling it the crowd pleaser for a reason. And a big shout out to Benji's friends from the Mentally Sound crew that traveled up here from Colorado to hang out, support them. And well, they're going to go out and do some film. And actually, they were out on their snowmobiles yesterday. That's how he prepared for this event, doing some filming. and. Oh, yeah shredding out in the backcountry, getting into some amazingly deep snow. We've got another Jackson local and native dropping in next. First time competing in this event though, Max Martin. Yeah, Max coming out of the gates hot, like he's got that ski racing background, now he's a big mountain skier, right? And coming into Corbett's his first run, we saw that 720. So he's got a little bit of a park riding background, it seems like too, and I know he had a little bit of trouble on his first run, so uh, he's hoping for some redemption, but I bet we're gonna see some big tricks out of him. And here we go, Max Martin dropping in. Max going for that 720 again, but uh, yeah, falling victim to that that churned up Corbett's Kular snow. And Max Martin back on his feet. Going for that left three and just getting a little forward there, but right back to his feet again. Ooh, spread eagle. Who doesn't love a spread eagle? All right, Max Martin finishing up. His first year performance, his second run here at the Kings and Queens of Corbett's Invitational. I know he's pumped just to be part of the event. Uh, probably not the performance he was hoping for, but I mean, this just goes to show how incredibly difficult it is to, to ride and to ski in this contest. These are the world's best skiers and snowboarders, and you see how much difficult they're having. Dropping next, we've got Thane Rich, another rookie out here for Kings and Queens. Coming out of Salt Lake City, skiing for Alta and Snowbird as well. The pro rally car racer, Kenny Rally to victory here on this second run. And here he is, Thane Rich dropping in. Thane going left five right off the nose a lot of the a lot of the athletes today are choosing to go more rider or skiers left and he went right off the nose off the highest part of the cornice and one of his skis opting to uh, continue its way down the run but stopping conveniently right before that 
little mini cliff band in the bottom of the couloir. He does have a few options still left. I mean, obviously we've got the big kicker right here at the bottom, but uh, yeah, he is standing on top of that little rock face. And if nothing else, there's plenty of powder to still be churned up. Jackson Hole Mountain Resort has been in the direct path of an atmospheric river for the past couple weeks. Mother Nature providing an abundance of snowfall. All right, our next athlete to drop in, we got Hannah Beeman. Hannah. Her fourth year competing in this event. Every year this event has run 38 years of age. She's had such a prolific pr professional career. Can she finally get the crown? This run could determine. Hana coming in, choosing the goat path option. She aired in last time and had said she didn't think she was gonna do that, but uh, she went for it anyway. She's over there in the uh, rider's left side, just below the cave. That's the Coombs Cave underneath the west wall, named after Big Mountain free skier pioneer uh, Doug Coombs, RIP. Yeah, Hana said, well, you know, with that drop order of dropping forth, there was so much fresh snow, had to go for the air. And speaking of air, how smooth was that backside 360? Beautiful smooth. She, she's feeling good about it. It seems like I asked her this morning when we were up top, if, you know, how she was feeling. And, and she sarcastically said, I don't know why I keep coming back for this, but then, <laughs> then shot me a big smile. Um, but you know, it just goes to show even with three previous years under her belt and knowing what she's getting into, there's still that anxiety for the veterans uh, to have to show up and, and, and hawk into Corbett's. It is no small feat. Garrett Warnick dropping here in just a moment for more of a look into his creativity. Check out his tenderfoot snowboarding edit. But right now, check out run two for Garrett Warnick. And here's Garrett Warnick, his second attempt to be crowned King of Corbett's. Garrett going backside three. Another backside three, standing on his feet for that one with a nice big pow slash. And powerful. Oh, that backflip landing couldn't have been smoother. You'd have no idea that there were other tracks up there right now. And to the Garrett final Warnick. jump. Garrett coming around on that back seven, a little bit short, dragging a hand, but still definitely get some, some cheers out of the crowd and from the other athletes. Like again, you know, that's one of the best parts of this. When you get down here, when the athletes get down at the end of their run and just get welcomed back into the fold, the high fives and uh, all the cheers from, from their fellow competitors. It's a really, really good energy down here. Thank you. Back you with money, hell yeah. Kings and Queen rookie Sophia Ruches getting primed for her second of two drops out here doing it for faction skis. This Pacific Northwest Charger loves chasing pillow or loves doing storm chasing and skipping down pillow lines. Here's Sophia Ruches, her second go into Corbett's taking the goat path approach. Up. So Sophia getting eaten up on that first skier's right wedge. Sophia was saying that uh, her parents helped her out, helped her get her, her snow tires on her, on her camper van for her drive out here to Jackson. So shout out to Sophia's parents for making sure she got here. It's good to have her. Okay, take it up. Uh, Sophia Rouge is getting herself together, getting the big backflip in. 
Lanier gear gets put down, but this gets looped out right back to her feet, though, coming into the final jump. This is for the spectators out here. And Sophia Ruches coming in. Her first time in Jackson, and I would have to say it's a memorable one. Yeah, absolutely. And next to drop for her second of two runs, Mount Baker local Zoe Vernon getting ready to do it here in Corbett's. Taking the goat path in and looking for some nice snow just up against that west wall right now, Jeff. Yeah, it looks like she's got a fresh line. Not a lot of people have been there. She's, in my opinion, a really wise decision on that line. There is a ton of fresh snow right along the bottom of the west wall. And Zoe Vernon. Zoe putting together a super fun run, ripping all that fresh snow right along the base of the west wall. Of the brothers Mindnick, we've got Hans Mindnick dropping in next, second place last year. Went for the butter 10 at 80 on his first run. That's definitely historic. That's not, that's not something anyone's ever done. Four, three. All right, well, let's see what this carpenter can whittle up for us. Oh! Hans Mindnick staying on his feet, backside three, and landing on the wall. That was insane with the backflip there. I thought I was seeing things. Back three to wall ride? Are you kidding me, Hans? Hans Mindnick, a little butt check on that final hit, but I am going to say that is going to be one of the contenders. That first hit, backside three, and I, I mean, we're gonna have to find out if he meant to land that close to the wall, but DC, from where we're standing, it looked like he got a little bit of a wall ride in. Absolutely, and Hans, a very calculated rider. I would think that was intentional. I talked about that with riders last year up there, because you're looking at it, that west wall, it does look attainable, quite of an extreme approach, but the wall ride, airing on to that, I think Hans just made history, definitely making the high re highlight reel for years to come. For sure. <laughs> Our only German rider in the mix, he's just been posting up out here in Jackson for the past couple weeks. This is Elias L. Hart, films with Travis Rice, Check out the proof in the pudding, Dark Matter, an amazing project, and Elias with an amazing appearance in that movie. And here's Elias Elhart. Elias dropping five, four. Dropping in his second run here in the Corbett's. And the beautiful method again. A salute to snowboarding purists. Elias holding it together in the crowd here at the base of 10 Sleep Bowl is pumped. They're letting him know they loved that method. His backside three. Oh! oh. Sending the back seven deep and just riding that out like it's nobody's business. Don Cavell and Bill Coleman to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Elias. Elias is feeling it, took a slightly different line off the nose, like came straight off the cornice. And I mean, I want to see the replay that had to be 50, 60 foot drop. Well, Elias Elhart, the German rider, putting it down when it counts on his second of two runs. And Jeff Moran, I think that could, that run could be a contention for the crown.
I, it's, I, I, I would say it's definitely, I mean, depending on what we still see, as of right now, it's, it's a podium run, for sure. So Cam Fitzpatrick, Jeff, you've known this guy since he was a little grom. What do you think's going through his head before he drops in for this second of two runs? Well, knowing Cam, I know there's some jitters, but I think that probably goes to say for you know all competitors. Um, but he uses that to his advantage. Like he really embraces that that uh, start gate nervousness, and he turns it into like a really lighthearted approach. So. Here we go, Five, Cam is coming four, into the lip three, and taking two, off right about one. now. It looks like Cam may have had a repeat from last year. It looks like I think he may have done a cartwheel into the goat path with a cab five attempt. Oh, Cam with his kind of signature back backflip. He kind of goes a little bit barrel roll and, and a lot of times grabbing melon. Sometimes we saw last year when he did it off the nose, poked out a, a big method. And here he comes into the last hit, the uh, the crowd pleaser going oh, yes. absolutely huge. That backside three. Well, he's having fun with it. You can tell he's probably not the run he was hoping for, but uh, yeah. It's good to see him out here. Cam competing in Kings and Queens all four years. Uh, and just, I don't know, I could go on all day talking about how much I love that kid. It might not be his year this year, but I foresee a crown in Cam Fitzpatrick's future. I write it down. Let's put that on tape, because I agree. I think I think he's got it. He's, uh, he's, he's going to work that out. Mark my words. We will be all hailing the throne of Cam Fitzpatrick sometime in the near future. All right. Yuki Kadono getting ready to drop in next. One of the athletes I was most excited to see added to the start sheet this year. Two-time Burton U.S. Open champion, an Olympian, six-time X Games medalist, hailing out of Japan, now residing in the States at Big Bear in California. His first time to Jackson Hole and what the showing Yuki has given us. Here we go. Yuki going for that switch back one Ooh. into the Kular again. Not as smooth of a landing as last time, but knowing Yuki, he's still having an awesome time. <laughs> Holding on, yes, Yuki. Big backside slash up on the wall, too. I love his uh, patented, just that low technical style. He's always so low to the board, no matter what kind of riding he's doing. You can definitely tell that was Yuki coming down from a long distance away. I had the pleasure of riding with Yuki the other morning for his debut, his first time here in Jackson Hole. And I was liking it to a wild animal let out of a cage and let loose. He was just popping off of every hit possible. I mean, there was no containing him. He just went absolutely wild here on the slopes of Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. It was so fun to witness firsthand. There's edits online on it. And wow, Yuki Kodono, what an amazing addition to the event this year. Next to drop, Alex Hall. His first time competing out here for the title, for the crown, here in Corbett's. Alex known for his innovative grabs and crazy, crazy spins. Here we go, Alex Hall. Alex hand dragging off the nose. And as with many other of, the, of our athletes, getting a little eaten up, but managing to recover quick enough to get back off another one of those man-made wedges right in the middle of the couloir. And that's probably the smallest you'll ever see Alex Hall go off of a jump. But another one of the athletes that when I saw his name on the start sheet, I was, I was floored by it. I was so excited to see him out here. 
and I really hope he comes back next year to compete for a shot at the crown here at the King and Queens of Corbett's. And another rookie getting ready to drop in for her second of two runs. This is Audrey Hebert residing in Banff. Originally coming out of the Quebec portion of Canada. Thirty-two years of age, out here skiing for True. Snowledge, unlimited skate and snow. Defending awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. And here she is, Audrey Hebert, taking the goat path entry. Audrey still finding some good snow in there. A nice backside slash under the cave, the Coombs Cave, and then working her way all the way across. This feature right here has been a pretty popular one today. Still some fresh snow over there in that lower part of the couloir. And here comes Audrey with a nose grab off of the crowd pleaser to finish out her second run here at the Kings and Queens of Corbett's Invitational. And holding on to that nose grab, really tweaking that one out. I like the, uh, the fad right now with the one color kits, right? Like everybody's got it. I was talking to Cooper earlier about his just totally awesome light pink what looks like a one piece and he's like yeah you know I figured I'd go for it it's just kind of what they had for me right now but uh, I mean the black on black that works for me and uh, as you as well but uh, I, I'm really liking to see all the riders and athletes that have the, the you know matching top and bottom kits our reigning queen Veronica Paulson on her first run, went for the backflip that brought her to the throne last year, making history as the first woman to land a backflip into Corbett's. Unfortunately, didn't get the clean landing, but we saw where her head was at, and I applaud her efforts. Will we see her attempt that again? We're gonna find out in a moment as our reigning queen gets ready to drop in for her second of two runs. Veronica Paulson, not backflipping in, different approach, but a nice smooth entry. Veronica's a competitor at heart. She's, she was on the Mogul Tour for many years coming up. So she's got that, that deep competitive strategy. And uh, I think she probably knew that if she wanted to put down a good run, especially with a little bit of how the visibility is working out, she was going to come in and keep it a little bit more conservative. Let's see what she's got off the last. All right, here comes our reigning queen of Corbett's, Miss Veronica Paulson, originally uh, growing up skiing in Squaw Valley, California, now finding herself here in Jackson Hole, one of, as I said, one of our uh, our free ski coaches at the Jackson Hole Ski and Snowboard Club, and uh, yeah, just a lot of a lot of hometown pride with Veronica being the, the queen of Corbett's uh, for the last year, and we'll see if she can hang on to that. Our next athlete to drop, Marissa Krawczak, for her second of two runs to see if she can threaten the crown here. Be titled the queen of Corbett's. Here we go, Marissa Krawczak, drop it in. Second of two runs. Marissa opting for the goat path coming in under the nose right there. There we go, Melissa catch it. Marissa catching some air on that first rider's right wedge. She's getting a little bit of wind blowing through on her run, but it's all right. Doesn't, it doesn't make the snow any less deep. Even it actually makes it deeper. Oh, Melissa, Marissa, sorry, I keep screwing that up. Marissa hanging on, getting another area. It's a hard, hard to see that other wedge right in the middle, but the riders and, and skiers are having to, 
Not too hard of a time finding it. Here she comes into the final booter, the crowd pleaser. Backside three, Melon for Marissa Krawczak to finish off her second run here at Kings and Queens of Corbett's. Jason Robinson dropping in next. Another one of the new additions to the start sheet this year for Kings and Queens of Corbett's. So excited to have him out here. And here he is. Will we see the unconventional approach by Jason Robinson? We're gonna find out right now. Jason Robinson, J-Rob, appearing out of a cloud of smoke. It looks like he came off somewhere on the west wall area, going cross court off that rider's right wedge and then all the way back over under the cliffs. That's where all the fresh snow is, as you can see right now. J-Rob has been described as a creative rider and we're definitely seeing that with his approach to Corbett's Cool Art today. Coming in nice and low to the last final hit and going backside three, very stylish. And an awesome run for J-Rob. Coming into the, the finish here with all the other riders getting some high fives. Seems like people were pumped on that. And yeah, how could you not be? Almost looked like he barreled himself, slashing some snow off of that west wall. And as you said, just appearing under the curtain of that cascading snow. Next to drop for his second of two runs, we got the Wyoming native, Mikey Marone, calling Jackson his home. What's he got for us? We're about to find out, Jeff. And Mikey Barone now in the couloir. Hey. Yeah, Mikey. Front side three off of that rock feature right in the center of the couloir. And Mikey keeping tons of speed coming here into the crowd pleaser, the final big hit and a oh, beautiful wow. method. I love the simplicity of the method and how it, it's something that everybody can appreciate. And Mikey making that one look good. It really is a salute to snowboarding. Kind of looked like Mikey uh, was a behind the binding grabber. Yeah. Well, we just powered through those run two as Mother Nature comes in and delivers more of what we love. Jeff, thoughts of what we saw go down there and those amazing second runs from our athletes? It was it was great, right? Like we thought we were gonna run through the start order from reverse to from the last to the beginning uh, with Mother Nature coming in as hot as she did. We decided to just throw the athletes back into it as they got back to the top. And we had quite a few athletes choose to take a second run and I'm glad we did because we saw some really cool things go down. Uh, what an incredible show these athletes put on for us today. Definitely gonna, gonna be tight as far as the athlete judging to see who gets crowned the 2021 King and Queen of Corbett's. But right now, let's take a look at our Heat 2 recap. Thank you so much to Red Bull, Yeti, Smartwool, GoPro, Gore-Tex, Sweet Protection, and Roadhouse Brewing. And your 2021 Queen of Corbett's goes to Madison Blackley. Well done, ladies. Congratulations. Your 2021 King of Corbett's. Welcome back to the throne, Carl Fosfat, Crazy Carl. <laughs> Look at that. Respectful to his subjects. Well, that wraps it up for the 2021 Kings and Queens of Corbett. Thank you all for an amazing week. And we'll leave you with the winning runs.